Hey, tonight's topic is going to be B-Ray Dome Light. One of the most important parts of lighting up your scenes, exterior scenes especially. And today it's going to be about 30 minutes of uh, lecture and some demonstration. So you will learn how to use image-based lighting scene using V-Ray Dome Light. And uh, you'll be able to learn all the setup and all the proper parameters. So before we begin, some terminology. What is image-based lighting? It's a technique called NCG to eliminate the scene using high dynamic range image. So we have indirect illumination. That's a method for gathering lights that comes indirectly to the scene. This may be bounce light or light coming from the environment. Direct light is the light emitted from the light sources that hit surface and is then reflected directly to the camera. Calculating the illumination from direct lights is much easier and faster than calculating indirect illumination. All right? So we have direct illumination, which is sun that is going and hitting our object, our structure. And as a result, the light starts to bounce and in dark areas where the light is not reaching, we start to gather this soft illumination that's called indirect illumination. Next term is HDRI. A high dynamic range image is made by taking several photos of the same scene. Each photo is taken at a different exposure in order to have detailed information about the brightness and darkness parts of the scene. The photos are later combined in a software which creates an image that contains all the color and brightness information. That means we are using spherical or fisheye lenses to capture half dome spherical uh, picture image. And that image is been taken in seven different brackets. So we have the overexposed and the underexposed areas. And then we have a software that takes all of those images that we took with different exposures. So basically for each pixel, we, we put a camera on a tripod so it doesn't move. So it takes exactly the same pixel. So that pixel going to be the most brightest with the highest exposure and it's going to be also the most darkest with the most darkest exposure. And later on, when it's been combined, it's getting pixel depth. That's what's called high dynamic range because every pixel is actually acting like a light point because it's got all the information from the dark tones to the light tones. All right, so uh, you can go check out some information about uh, how this stuff being created, which I think very fascinating to learn about HDRI images. But in this tutorial, we're just going to get already pre-made HDRI image and use it for our image-based lighting method. Okay, so NCG, IBL, image-based lighting, is a technique which uses colors and brightness of an image to illuminate the scene. So again, every pixel that we have is actually a lighting point. It shoots lights into the scene allows us to place virtual objects in the real world environments and get correct illumination coming from the environment. The typical approach uses HDRI panoramic images placed in the environment and global illumination to capture the light from it. In Viri, a better and a faster result can be achieved by loading HDRI panoramic images into a V-Ray dome light and using it to illuminate the scene. So we're gonna use a V-Ray dome light, load up this high dynamic range image and illuminate our scene by using that image. So we get natural colors, reflections, and all that stuff. The standard approach requires that we use global illumination to gather light from the environment. This creates several issues. Slow rendering times. The GI engine needs to trace multiple rays in all directions for each shaded point in order to collect light information. This is a wasteful and imprecise process. Soft shadows. GI engines cannot create nice sharp shadows that would be created by a bright spot in the image, right? So if we're using just the GI for illuminating our scene, we won't be having a direct light, a direct source of light, and the light will come from all directions. It will be a waste of computing. Still, we're gonna get nice soft shadows, but we're not gonna get any directional light. 
Flickering animations, since we use only GI to illuminate the scene, this creates problems with animations. And uh, no photon mapped caustics. Creating a sharp caustic requires a direct light source, which is not present in this case. Okay, so again, V-Ray Dome Light solves all those issues. By important samplings to recognize the bright spots of HDRI image and then shoot direct lights from those parts. This approach solves all the issues of the standard approach and creates crisp images in a fraction of a time. That means very fast. Okay, so we can create V-Ray Dome Light from the Quick Tool panel. If we click uh, on that half sphere symbol, we also can create it from the Create Lights panel. And we also can use the command panel to create V-Ray uh, Light and here set it to Dome and uh, click somewhere in the scene in order to create that light. Okay, we can use the V-Ray Light Lister in order to switch on and off the light uh, increase the multiplier, uh, set up the color, units, and affect diffuse and specular. In the properties, we'll be able to use the multiplier that controls intensity of a light. Since we are usually using an image to illuminate the scene, the brightness of each pixel multiplied by the value specified to get the final brightness used for the illumination. Okay, so the multiplier controls how bright is every pixel in that HDRI image. Color, color of the light is the color that the light will emit if we're not using the HDRI image. Texture enables and disables the use of the texture and none right here, this is where we drag and drop our HDRI image. Now we have different uh, options for the dome light. We can put it on spherical and it will enable the full spherical mode. If it's disabled, it's just top hemisphere. Affect alpha, we'll be able to connect and disconnect alpha and disconnect it from this, uh, the entire image, our dome light. And it will be visible or not visible in our alpha channel. Photon emission, the radius right here, allows us to uh, specify the volume in which photons will be traced in order to create photon mapping caustics. You can see volume represented by green hemisphere in the viewport. Casting shadows, we can enable and disable shadows and effect and uh, specular and reflections. If you want to see this V-Ray dome reflected, if not, and uh, we're going to use a background image or Enviro image, you can tick this off affect reflections and specular and then this very dome light will not be reflected and your environment will be reflected in the in the glass very hdri in the material edit slot allows us to load high dynamic range image and properly map them into the environment so we have here different mapping types spherical rotation we can rotate it horizontal vertical and uh, in order to match the best uh, view and the best light for our camera. Overall multiplier right here allows us to uh, control the overall multiplier of the image so it affects both the rendering and the material editor. Now if we scroll down here color space we can select type and uh, we can use inverse gamma in order to control our image uh, through the inverse gamma parameter right here so we can lower it down in order to get nice contrast to our image if it's looking a little bit washed out we can fix that with the inverse gamma that's a cool trick that i'm about to show you in a few seconds okay and um, if we switch we have another few types here srgb will uh, set the image in srgb color space and from max if we'll get the from and from 3ds max it will get all the information of gamma uh, through the 3ds max and it will be controlled through this 3ds max okay and i again if it's not been set up to nothing none there will be no color correction applied to hdri image so this is very important panel here to get good control of the colors and the contrast Alright, so now let's go to 3ds Max 
and start our presentation. All right, so I'm going to open my 3ds Max V-Ray dome light scene here. And as you can see here, I've got three HDRIs that's been loaded. I'm going to put it on the active shade mode and uh, start my render. As you can see here, it's pretty dark, so I'm going to click on create dome light, click it on the scene and create my dome light, which I can access from this multiplier here or from this panel of uh, parameters. Let's put it a little bit higher. And as you see here, we can control the color or by the color or temperature. We can also have a full or a spherical. In that case, I need to isolate my dome light while it's been selected. So either can have a full dome light or a spherical. I'm gonna get out of my isolation mode. And we can check affect alpha option. If we go to alpha channel, we'll be able to see if we wanna merge our HDRI with the render or separate it and get it with an alpha channel. Lock texture to icon. Adaptive dome. This is the new optimization that came out with V-Ray and that actually renders seven times faster. That's a very cool improvement that uh, Chaos Group did to the V-Ray Next. We can cast and uncast shadows and remove from effect specular or reflections. All right. Now let's load our texture right here. Gonna drag and drop it. Voila, we get our image and that image can be controlled from that panel here. So we can rotate it. can see how interactive render works pretty fast get nice and responsive right there on the spot and we can control the overall multiplier Now here we come to the one of those cool options we can display colors of HDRI and sRGB or we get from the 3ds Max but in our case we're using inverse gamma with 0.7 and look how sharp defined and contrasty the shadows and the lights getting I really love this option I think this is one of those keys to have successful beautiful renders lit only by HDRI which is pretty cool all right now let's uh, add some cool features if we go to environment here we can get a very aerial perspective so if we click add, you can select it from here. This one been added, I just need to activate. And this option gives a nice cool fog effect. It's kind of volume that's been added to the image. You can see lower parameters adding a little bit more 
And by the way, there is a cool documentation about this on Cal's group aerial perspective atmospheric effect page where they put all the examples and the documentation about uh, how the meters work, how the height, atmospheric height work. You can see really nice depth of field volume effect for your exteriors. All right. So this is how you guys use V-Ray Dome Light in order to get really nice sun <laughs> into my face like this one right here, but no, into your renders and get a nice realistic effect of presence, the entire presence of this whole environment within your renders, All right? So go ahead, download those scenes, test them out, and I'll see you in the next video.